All right, so that's a handful. I think we got enough done. I think we uh, got a few interesting things here. Are there any questions? Maybe about the bounds, like because you mentioned, like you know, we had like seen that they were in between the bounds, and then we we played around. Is there like a a good indication for saying this is like the best like bound, like normalized kind of or? No, you can't really say that. Unfortunately, what you need to do is really test your strategy and and run it through a wide range of parameters in order to do that. So, I mean, one thing we could do, of course, is we could run this strategy again uh, through a number of parameters. So, let's just say we've got this here, right? And then we got our plotting. And one thing we could do is we could just put the plotting there. And so we're plotting all this. And then we wrap this into another loop and run it through a number of parameters. So we say for look back in. And then we could just use our loopbacks again that we used before, as we did here, for example. So now we have a range of loopbacks. Okay, so now you can see this is this is the results for the different loopbacks here. And they're all clearly following a very similar pattern with those big drawdowns. Now we can take some hints from that and say, okay, there's probably something we need to do to the strategy to improve it. Now, another thing that we could also try is to actually make the bands a bit smaller. So you can actually see is if you shorten the bands, you get much better performance for mm -hmm. some of them. Okay, now that's that's interesting. We could, of course, also label them and then see which ones of them actually perform all right. Do the bands always need to have the same length or can they also be different lengths? They can be different, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can be different. So you could, for example, make this 0 0.1 and this 0 0.5. So let's just say make the 0 0.5. In this case, obviously, we don't use the upper band because we have a long only. So that's why it doesn't actually show here. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely see that there's some interesting performances here. It suggests that we could make the band even smaller. So let's just do 0.05 and see what happens. And yeah, you can see that there is something interesting here, but so the 20 look back definitely stands out. So shorter look backs seem to work better. We could even have a 10 look back in there and see what this does. And you can see the 10 look back still has a big drawdown somewhere. Uh, the 20 does avoid that to some extent, but there's definitely some interesting things to see here. So, all right, great. So what we've done is basically we've looked at the simple moving average strategy here, which is probably one of the simplest trading strategies that we can imagine. And then we looked at a reversion strategy using Bollinger Bands, which is also fairly simple. And we can see that just skimming through some very basic parameters, it may give us some interesting results. Now, again, what's important here is to first be aware that we don't want to run through a wide parameter range because it could really easily get us into overfitting. So we got to be really careful with that. But also we can see that there is a tendency for shorter periods and smaller bands to give us better results, which is generally also a property that, that often pertains to mean reversion strategies. So it's not unexpected. And the best way to really figure out how this works correctly is to play around with this and see what you can come up with.